This is a scientific article that I wrote with a lot of help from other people, of course. But this is my very first uh, article as a PhD student here. Uh, I've been a part of other scientific articles before, but this is one where I uh, finally got my project started and uh, got to see some of my work uh, blossom into uh, what is now published as a full paper. And scientific articles are important because they are what scientists and engineers and researchers use to communicate their findings to the larger community. So scientific articles uh, come in many different forms, either in the form of a full paper, a communication, a review article, and many other types. So in today's video, I'll be going over a little bit about uh, what scientific articles are and uh, sort of what uh, some tips I have for you guys to get started on uh, publishing some of your work based on some of my own experiences here. So let's get started. So a scientific article is uh, a medium in which people go and present their work. So a lot of times people can present their work at a conference, uh, at a poster session, or at other formalized events, but generally science articles are the most common way for people to do that. And there are many different types of journals out there that people can submit their articles to. So when you've done a series of experiments and you've uh, made a lot of progress in your work and you feel that you're ready to share this information uh, with other people, you start drafting up a paper and then go and submit it to a journal. Now, depending on what journal you submit it to or what type of audience you're trying to cater to uh, will ultimately affect who gets to see your paper and who reads it. And uh, for academic researchers, most importantly, who gets to cite the paper. So a brief overview as to the types of uh, journals out there. So in the case of material science, there are lots of different types of journals that people can submit their articles to. Uh, some of the higher tier journals like Science and Nature, a lot of people outside of material science would also want to submit to those types of journals. But there are also other uh, journals like advanced materials, which is where my paper ended up getting into. Um, and there is uh, ACS Nano and uh, Nanoscale and a bunch of other types of journals, depending on the type of niche uh, environment or uh, information that you want to pass on to different types of uh, researchers. And these journals uh, are uh, graded usually by a metric known as impact factor. And impact factor uh, essentially tells you uh, the readership of the journal. So if you have a fairly high impact factor journal, then uh, chances are your journal is uh, a journal that a lot of people uh, go and read and cite. Um, so uh, it adds more prestige to the journal. So the higher impact uh, factor journal that you're able to get into, um, the more prestige that your paper ends up having. So advanced materials has a impact factor of about 25, which is actually quite high for uh, materials journal, but also for journals in general. So I'm really happy that uh, all this work that I spent the last eight months or so uh, performing and writing up uh, and managed to get into a journal like this. So a journal article you can see as a glorified lab report almost. So you have an abstract and you have uh, a section that's usually an introductory section. So it gives you an overview of the field if uh, you aren't necessarily familiar with. So if these are articles that you see from a similar field, chances are their introductions are going to be mostly the same. And then, of course, you have your figures where uh, you go and illustrate some of uh, your findings and go and communicate graphically uh, some of the information about your paper. So beyond your figures, you also have uh, the main body of your text, which is the result and discussion. So a lot of people spend this time to describe uh, what they did in their work and uh, sort of what the main conclusions are from the work. And depending on what type of journal that you're submitting to, you may have an experimental section that is uh, before the results and discussion, or like this journal here, it is after uh, towards the end. So this experimental section is useful for people to know what materials and processes and equipment that you use to perform your experiments, and if so needed, that they go and buy and use these materials to go and replicate your work. 
And last but not least, you have a whole list of citations uh, that you make references to other people's work uh, in your paper so that it sort of builds upon that collective body of knowledge. So research papers are definitely something that PhD students need to produce in order to graduate. In some cases, like myself, uh, you would need to produce about three first author papers in order to graduate from my program. Now, other programs are different. Some might require at least one publication, some may require several, and some might not even have a publication requirement. It all depends on what field you work on and uh, what your advisor wants uh, out of your degree in general. So a few quick tips I have on how to get started. So you've done some work in a lab and you're not quite sure how to organize your data. So hopefully these tips will help you in drafting and uh, hopefully getting your first paper published. So first thing you want to think about is what kind of storyboard that you're trying to build. So you've, like I said, you've done some experiments, uh, you have some data, and you are trying to make some sense of that data. And the idea is to first visually lay out what type of format that you want to see your paper go in. What are the main messages of your paper? Uh, what types of figures and data that you feel you need to collect? And uh, what's the timeline that you're looking at? So that would be kind of a first level approach as to what type of um, paper structure that you want to follow in. Next is something that I think would be uh, very important to think about is uh, what type of journal uh, do you want to get into? Do you see your work going into a very high impact factor journal? Um, do you see it going to kind of a smaller journal that you want to get quickly? And it really depends. Um, so a lot of times because of um, the competitive nature of academia, you want to be able to get your work out as soon as possible. But sometimes certain journals take a long time to review uh, and eventually get published. And this is time that may be very valuable to you. So you don't want to spend it all on the review process. So sometimes you may want to um, uh, consider submitting to a lesser known journal or a lower impact factor journal uh, to speed up the process, or you may want to um, hold back and collect more data and make your work seem more novel so that you can potentially submit to a higher impact factor journal. So uh, again, that kind of balancing act, it really depends on what you want to get out of your work. So another tip that I want to give you is uh, to really figure out what your figures are going to look like. So before you even type your first word on a Word document. Um, first, figure out what data you have and what kind of figures you want to organize your, uh, your work into. So in general, uh, being able to do that will give you uh, sort of a mental picture as to the direction that your paper is going to go into. So always start with figures. Then the next step is to uh, start coming up with the result in discussion where you can go and uh, now that you have your figures, you can sort of describe your figures, uh, talk about your data and make your own interpretations of the data. And this is gonna be very important because this is the the meat of your paper. So you want to do very well at this step so that you not only reference the work done by other people, but you can also make uh, mention as to how your work is differentiated from everyone else's work. And then last but not least, figure uh, the introduction, the conclusion, the abstract. Uh, those things are relatively easy to do, so you guys can go and um, organize those towards the end. And uh, hopefully after everything's said and done, and you have all of your uh, figures and your, your text done, you have a first complete manuscript. Now you have to send your manuscript to your boss, AKA your advisor. Chances are your advisor, uh, depending on your experience level and their experience level, they may end up rewriting a, a small chunk, um, a mid-sized chunk, or even completely rewrite your draft. And that's okay because especially if you're a younger graduate student and you're not as well-versed in writing, um, they may uh, end up rewriting some portions or uh, reinterpret some of your data and just help you along the process. So um, definitely don't take too much offense if that ends up happening because uh, I've certainly had that happen with my papers where um, some of my uh, earlier drafts were completely rewritten or uh, in later stages of the draft only some parts were rewritten. So uh, it really depends on kind of your experience level and also what type of uh, work uh, you've put into uh, crafting the paper. 
and then you go ahead and submit the paper. So usually this is uh, a process that can take anywhere from a few weeks to a few months. And it's all a peer reviewed process. So meaning a lot of people within uh, your general field or someone with some knowledge of your background uh, from other institutions or other organizations will be reviewing your papers and they're the people that will determine whether or not your paper gets to move along and get published in a particular journal. And if your paper gets rejected, uh, it's not the end of the world. It can happen. It's a very cutthroat environment. So uh, don't get discouraged. I would say that um, either try to make revisions and resubmit to the paper if um, they're willing to take it, or just go and submit to another journal altogether. Uh, in any case, your goal is to try to get your work out there so that pe people will be able to see it, and hopefully you will be able to um, uh, get more viewership and other people citing your paper down the line. And this process can be very stressful. So uh, I remember having um, a lot of late nights and working through vacation periods and just going and collecting a lot of last minute data to add to satisfy reviewer comments. So a lot of times uh, this paper writing process is definitely uh, can be stressful, but uh, something that you definitely uh, can improve on uh, as time goes on. And hopefully you'll be able to collect data faster, you'll be able to interpret data and write about it a lot faster and hopefully a lot better. In general, uh, scientific review articles, uh, communications, full papers, all the scientific literature out there is important for people to understand what it is that you do for your work and also other people's work so that they can hopefully build upon that collective knowledge and you can go ahead and um, build uh, your career by adding to scientific literature. So if you want to learn more about a uh, paper writing process or uh, just general tips on how to craft a paper or even uh, finding links as to advice for what types of journals to submit to. So I'll include a few links in the comments below uh, or the description below and hopefully you'll find that useful and uh, being able to craft uh, your very first or maybe uh, your like second or third or fourth paper already. So again, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you found some of these tips useful. Um, I know I'm still pretty early in my graduate career um, and it's uh, a process that I'm still learning about, um, like paper writing in general, but uh, definitely it's exciting to get your work out there, to get it published, and hopefully people uh, get to see uh, the results of all the hard work that you put in. Thanks again, and uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, until next time, just let me know in the comments below what type of content that you guys want to see in future videos. So thanks, keep calm, and exiton.